Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at William Sausage, the home of authentic country goodness and family-owned and operated since 1958, right here in Tennessee. On today's episode, Scott sits down with Crystal and Charles Mead from Soleil Garden Center in Union City. They talk about how it is owning a nursery in a rural community, as well as their love for sharing gardening tips with their customers. I'm Scott Williams, host of Real Foot Forward, where each week we celebrate our little section of the South, and just like at our museum and heritage park, Here in Union City, we explore the culture, spirit, accomplishments, and heritage of West Tennessee. And today, I have really special guests, Charles and Crystal Mead, who are the uh, proprietors of Soleil Garden Center. Thank Thank you. you. So before we go to the back and figure out how you got to where, how you got to this moment today on our podcast, tell us a little bit about um, your place of business that you guys run together. Well, we are a Soleil Garden Center. Obviously, being a garden center, we have plants. And we try to carry more specialty plants that you can't get at the box store. We have a lot of your plants at our house. Good. I'm yeah. glad you do. I'm glad <laughs> Some you do. Some of them we didn't water, and so they, you do have to water those. It happens, but that's not a bad thing because you have to come back that's and replace right. those plants. That's right. See, so. I would think that you do have kind of a high level of people coming back. And, we do. You know, and then, and some plants, the nice thing we, about some plants is they do die every year. Yeah, and know, we, count, we count on you people to kill your plants. <laughs> yes, so. yes. <laughs> keeps us in business. So so you're also obviously a married couple with a family running a business together. Um, so that's kind of a, a unique situation. But before we dive into that, let's go back to your beginning. You're from this area. I am. Union City. I'm born and raised here. And um, I started out being an elementary school teacher. So I was a librarian when we met. And then we decided to have more children after we got married. So we have a 10-year-old daughter, and our oldest is 27. And then there are children in between. We have a 20-year-old and two 15-year-olds. So you guys have a full house. So we have a full house. Three are at home right now, so that keeps us busy. You have a lot going on. We have a lot going on. So I quit teaching, so we thought I would just be a stay-home mom, and I got a little bit bored with that. And so... We were out yard sailing, out just... No, I was going to mow, and you asked if I wanted to go to a yard sale. Now, I do want to point out, because I did a tiny bit of research, and there's like eight stories out there about how (laughs) you guys got that green... What do you call it? A flower store. What what is it called? Nursery. 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 The nursery. Place where plants live. So So there's like you were going to go get socks... (laughs) <laughs> there's, there, there is a there's an article. You know, anyway, okay. so we're here to set the story, set the story straight. straight. What exactly happened? Okay. Well, you're going to get two different stories from uh, us oh, okay. because we don't I agree. I think I should tell this story. Okay. I'll let him tell his. Let's first. hear it. Okay. No, I was uh, going out to mow our yard, and Crystal asked if I wanted to go to yard sale to look at some pottery that she had seen in a picture. I think maybe on Facebook or something like that. And so we went to the yard sale, and when we left the yard sale, we passed an auction sign. And, and it just said, it was right there at it the was, nursery? Yeah. No, we followed multiple signs oh, wow. to go to the auction. Oh, you thought it was going to be like Yeah, a, where we ended up auction. what was then Virgin's Nursery, which has been here, I think, since 1942. And uh, <clears throat> so we went inside to see what we might be able to get at the auction. And we started off looking at some rocks for the yard, and I decided to stick around for some reason and see how much the property was auctioned for. And uh, after a couple hours of doing that and buying one of the greenhouse structures, um, the property came up for bid, and there was no bidder. So I called Crystal and asked if, Interjection. No, this is the interjection. <laughs> yeah. Well, is- interjection. I had left because we had this little baby and she oh. was hot. It right. was hot day. So I had gotten her into the pool and he calls and says, Do you want to buy a nursery? And so which is, we did. Which I should point out is a lot better than honey. I bought a nursery. It is better. Yeah. I, 
So are you joking? And there's a book yeah. that you can read called mm-hmm. So You Want to Buy a Nursery <laughs> that my father gave to me after I bought yeah. uh-uh. a nursery, and that would have been a good book to read uh-uh. before we bought the nursery. But anyhow, uh, that's how we ended up with the nursery. And so was were you in a state of mind where you were trying to think what is next for me, what business do I want to be in? What you know, where were you mentally when you when this idea came? We had been playing around uh, both Crystal and Micah, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, some type of business along these lines, um, but it was certainly not planned for at that moment to go uh, into it as quickly as, as we did. But it just came along. Now, now you are not from around here. Where are you from? I am originally from California. I ended up here by way of Virginia. I used to be in a defense technology industry. Um, and uh, after Crystal and I got married, we, we you know, we're, we settled here. And uh, yeah, I was in between jobs, uh, you know, er- at that time. So you were looking for what's next. What what was the state of the nursery when you when you bought it? Um, it was pretty run down. Um, I mean, it's been a nursery property, like I said earlier, for a very very long time. But and it, it had been not in use for about a year um, when we came into possession of it. So you know, as you might imagine, you know, it was, it was overgrown in places and, and still is in some places. <laughs> um, but there, but, there, you know, I've been there. I've yeah. buy, that's where I buy my plants. So you know, but there's a creative spirit about it. It's not, you know, it's not a, a standard uh, box store. It's got creativity to it. Well, when we when we got into it, it was right at a point where. I can't remember what the statistic exactly was, but the decline in independently owned nurseries and landscaping garden centers was pretty steep. I, there were, when we first got uh, Soleil, there was a nursery in Mayfield. There was one, I think, in, well, there's one in Martin, and there were two or three other ones south of us, and they've all closed. And so we're pretty much the only one, I think the closest independently owned garden centers like ourselves are in Paducah and Jackson now. That's that's in Dyersburg. Oh, there's Dyersburg Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. But there are fewer, fewer of them and that people have changed the way that they spend money. And so we knew we had to come up with something that was a little bit more than just a place that sold plants. And so you've got um, a store. What? T- tell me a little bit about the store that's on site. We have a showroom, and we have a few brands, I think, that keep us set apart from other folks. Uh, one line that we carry in candles is Nest Candles. It's a high-end candle, and people love it. You don't have to advertise it. Everybody loves the candles. So that's one thing that keeps the ladies coming back, and guys. And we have a few pieces in there from local people artists. So we have Brian Galetto. He's a local artist and his dad, Tim Crow. They do welding and they can make anything, absolutely anything. So that's one thing that I try to keep those guys bringing me diff- different things to give the people. And they love their art. Home decor, furniture. Micah and I had been building furniture Right before we bought the nursery. And Mike is your brother. Mike is my brother. He's my baby brother. And your your family, I noticed, like your grand your grandfathers mm-hmm. built uh, they did. furniture out of old yes. wood. Yes, and uh, so we grew up in the woodworking shop with granddad. My father's father, he built furniture. And then my mother's father, he was a turtler out on Real Foot Lake. So he lived down at the lake. As a matter of fact, you have some of his carvings up here oh. at Discovery Park. Uh-huh. In the uh, his, in the O'Brien County history section, it, uh, yeah, there's some in that, and then right at the entrance, you have some of his carvings right on the left hand side in that okay. case. Yep. So, um, yeah, they were, we're not as talented as our grandfathers, like by a long shot. Oh, I'll speak for myself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's where Micah gets a lot of his creativity, and maybe I do too. And so it is like a whole family uh, affair. It is a like, family affair. Like My you. mom's out there. Our kids are out there. If they're not at school, they're usually out there. So yeah, it's a family affair. And so what what are what are the good things about that? Like, what does that add to your world, oh, having working with your family? 
Oh, let's, where's that sensor button? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty great. Um, I'm thankful to have my brother back. He lived in Murfreesboro, but I'll let him tell mm-hmm. that part of the story. So we didn't see each other a lot unless I went down for a show because he played with bands. And if he wasn't doing that, he was recording. So I didn't get to see him that much. So that part's fantastic. If I need anything done, technology, anything to do with technology, Micah's there or creative. And then um, Charles is also the, um, I don't know, what would you call my position? Charles gets this grand vision, Mm -hmm. and then I squelch it. Oh. (laughs) I have to bring it back down into perspective. So, no, he's a great designer. He can um, really come up with something. He is. You're a visionary. He is. He calls me his muse, but I don't know. I don't know because I usually kind of. He does. It's sweet. That's a nice thing about working together. Yeah, we have a great dynamic in that. I think we tease about it, but he does. He can design anything from um, just a flower arrangement or a pot to a full landscape properties. There are quite a few in town and outside of town that he's designed, and they're beautiful. So yeah, it's nice working with family. And so, what are the what are the challenges? Well, I guess. We're all there together working as a unit. And so when you have a kid over here that's sick and you need to go get a child, and then you have one over here that needs to be at band, it gets difficult because these are our people. We're all together. So that's a difficulty. But I don't know. Otherwise, I don't know. What about what about uh, running a business in a rural community? Obviously, if you were in Chicago in a neighborhood there, you know, it would be a whole different dynamic of, um, you know, what what how do you get people there? You know, what what is the? It's got to be a challenge, but there's got to be good and bad. I'm sure. There's an interesting thing that that goes on is that we're way out there, you know, in people's mindset, you know, and and I think a lot of that is comes from. There's not, uh, oh, I don't know how to say this. Um, you go into town and you want everything to be, you know, centrally located and all that kind of stuff. And <clears throat> driving an extra 10 minutes seems to be an arduous task for whatever reason. So it, it it's something that people seem to plan to do. I'm going to go all the way out there. You know, when we're only about a five minute drive from where we sit right now. Right. And, yeah. You know, I think that's a byproduct um, obviously of being in a community where people yeah. have grown up and mm-hmm. traveled sure. close by. Mm-hmm. And good because to me, yeah. I mean, I could walk there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I, mean, I grew up here yeah. and I remember my mom taking us there after we swam at the moose pool. That's where everybody went. When we were kids to swim and we had to go all the way out to virgins to the garden center. It's like, I don't know. How far is that? A couple miles. Yeah. Yeah, Four miles? Not, okay. Not far. I was yeah. thinking that was so far. So, yeah, we are kind of on a back 40. That's how people see us. We're out right. there. But it's, I mean, it's, so, uh, that's kind of where you would want a nursery. Sure. You know, yeah. to be out in the, in yeah. the little bit. I mean, you, I mean, I, honestly, yeah, I could ride my bike there in mm-hmm. literally three minutes be sure. there. Yeah. So it's you're right. really not, yeah, but it is right. funny. It is funny. But, I think, though, I think word of mouth has probably been our best form of uh, advertising, I think. Probably. I mean, we've tried different venues, but we'll have people come in from Clarksville. I'm like, that's a pretty good stretch for a garden center. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. To now you're, from- but, but I, I'm curious if you feel like social media has contributed because I know you guys do some really witty uh, you know, that's things Micah. on, mm-hmm. on uh, social yeah. media. Sure. Your brother does some real creative. Yeah. Yes, he uh, does. And so I'm, that that gets a lot of likes, and mm-hmm. so that has mm-hmm. to also help. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It definitely expands the reach. Sure. Um, and because we are in a rural community, and I know you face some of the same things uh, challenges here, is that we really have to try to expand our borders to bring in interest because there are only so many customers in our you know population here locally. Mm-hmm. Um, so that has helped. You know, get it easily be able to target communities and things like that or that are outlined to us um, without having to run print ads and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, that's very helpful. It's also got to be a challenge that you're a cyclical business. You know, there's times when, you know, you're just like everybody, mm-hmm. as soon as it starts to turn warm, mm-hmm. you know, I always get my plants too soon. 
and I, I always get them the minute good. that it's warm, it's good. and then I have to come back and get them again. <laughs> yeah, we, we would like to duplicate you. Yeah, so yeah. Scott does du- yeah. double planting. That's that's yeah. what we bank on. So, uh, you know, and you know, I, I always, my wife and I always disagree because I always think she doesn't pay close enough attention to the directions of shade versus sun. And she's like, well, let's just try it. And, <laughs> and I'm right. like, no, no trying. It <laughs> fails every time. Let her try. You, you yeah, cannot you let her mother try. nature, you know? So, right. um, you, um, so you're, you're working like many, many, many hours right. and then, and then it, you have time to downtime to plan. And is that, well, like, what are your busy sure. times in that business? Uh, our busiest time of year is from wherever it, actually you know gets past that last freeze um, which is typically somewhere towards the end middle towards the end of March and then through June and this is one thing that was a phenomenon that we didn't know actually existed until we got into the garden center when it hits 90 degrees everybody disappears it's over it's like that huh. first day mm-hmm. I mean you could have the day before busy as the whole you know busy as, as you can be and if the next day is 90 degrees and it stays like that they're gone and so and so that obviously hits the other parts of your business as well well that's why we started the other parts because we thought you know it's such a lull from June to when you're ready to sell mums and pumpkins. So we had to remind the people, hey, we're over here, you know. So that's how we started the gift shop or why we started the gift shop. And uh, it, it, just a little reminder. So, yeah, it slows down in there, but we keep a trickle. And yeah. then January and February, we, we've decided to close the past two years mm-hmm. because it was just dead. I mean, I, mean, I guess the, the alternative would be you would have to sell – um, what are those red flowers that people buy at Christmas time? We do sell Poinsettias. those. We, do we sell those. those. Yeah. Yes, and that's pretty much the last plant yeah. that and we after sell. That, after that, it's that's gone. It. That's mm-hmm. right. Um, and then what? What is in this region? Like when when I get when I'm as soon as March hits, I'm going to be in there. In this region, what are the things that people buy the most? Like what do you what do you stock up on to make sure you don't run out of? Um, and you know, it's it's. Uh, somewhat of a fickle market, but there are always, you know, your best sellers and they're going to be geraniums, petunias, uh, caliber coa, begonias, um, impatience, so impatience. Um, yeah. their impatient markets changed a lot of, uh, over the last years because of, uh, some powdery mildew diseases. Um, and so we sell a impatient called sun patient, uh, quite a bit more than we do the traditional uh, impatiens, the, the ones for shade. Um, uh, what was it that your grandfather uh, raised? Um, um, geraniums. Oh, my, yeah. yeah, my grandfather on my father's side uh, brought some geraniums back from the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, and he kept those things alive, says family legend, for years and drove my grandmother nuts with it, <laughs> dragging it back in the house every winter. They lived in uh, on Lake Michigan in okay. Illinois. Um, and then my great Great grandmother on my mother's side of the family was one of the largest iris farmers uh, in Oklahoma. See, it's um, in your blood. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's in your um, blood. So we. Stopped. I didn't know this until after oh, I okay. got into this okay. uh, whole plant business. How long have you had Boris and Natasha? Are they geraniums? Well, I've had like, yeah. I've had their geraniums. Yes, I have Bor. I've had Boris now for nine years, eight years. Mm-hmm. Um. No, Natasha's no longer with us. Oh, oh I'm sorry. A yeah. sad day. Yeah. That's unfortunate. But because you can propagate a plant, it, I can have another Natasha in like two two weeks. Right. Yeah. So. so what? So I have a daughter who's great at growing things. She has got mm-hmm. a green thumb, and she she when she comes to your place, she picks things up off the ground, which is kind of like shoplifting. Not at I, all. You know. Not at all. I told her. I told her to go check with. She asked. She, she did. I ask. told her to ask, but she takes them She's and she great. she puts them in there and they uh-huh. root. You know. Yeah. And, and yeah. so what what should I, she's majoring? I don't even remember what she's majoring in, but I was trying to get her to come to UT Martin and major in something um, horticulture ish. Yes. Mm-hmm. What 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 do you hear out there? Like what what major should she go if she wants to follow in your footsteps? Oh my goodness! If she wants to follow in my political science, <laughs> and you get a job. Education. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, for one thing, she loves plants, so right. that's a start. Right. And Horticulture. Yeah. Plant sciences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. I would love for her to come out. Yeah, see, she could come work work for absolutely. you guys. Absolutely, that would be great. And turn out there, and we'll just hand her those keys. She's young. She's got energy. Right. All right. That's right now, need. I think she's like international social justice, which there's not a lot of so, lead yeah, over. Yeah, it's I mean, not that's a, lot a of perfect, lead over. perfect yeah. start for getting into the nursery yeah. business, right there. So, what was it? What was in the book that you got on? So you want to raise a nursery, or you want to start a nursery? What was in the book that you wish? You had known in advance. I mean, the general theme was don't. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I said it would have been nice to read before. Right. Um, Plants. There are, a lot of people go into the plant the, this business because they find that they have a love of plants. And, you know, I guess I we definitely, yeah, yeah, we definitely kind of fall uh, into, the, into that category. Mm-hmm. But they lack an understanding of business to be able to uh, make a successful nursery business. And it's a very, very tough business to be in. Because you go in and you, you buy the stuff wholesale. You got to keep it alive until it gets to your place. Mm-hmm. You got to mark it up the right amount, not go over too much. Right. And then you got to hope that it doesn't die before somebody can <laughs> right. come and buy right. it. And if yeah. it dies, you throw it out. Yeah, right. It's very much like your produce at your grocery store. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a shelf life to where that plant that you buy for a dollar fifty, you've been taking care of it for so long that now you would have to sell it for twenty five dollars to you know make your money back on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the you know hardest things that we got into those first couple of years. You get to the end of spring and you're like, oh, we didn't sell all the plants that we bought. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not going to live, so you got to throw them away. It's kind of like throwing away your kids to a certain. It. It's really right. difficult. I have no part of that. So yeah. yeah, so we've we've been caught up in the cycle of you know taking care of things a little bit longer than they would have been profitable to us. But yeah. uh, you know, you learn a little bit. Plants do not take weekends off. So oh, yeah, yeah you mm-hmm. have to have somebody in there on Sundays and the days that you're closed and all year round. Um, now, um, so you obviously must have a flower bed. Do you ever take the stuff that didn't sell home and plant it everywhere? Yes, <laughs> so, yes. So you, yeah, stuff that that didn't sell, stuff that might sell. Oh, okay. You take it. Before, you, do you ever go home and go? Wait a minute. What's that doing here? It, it is funny. And he's <laughs> yeah. like I told you. He's this visionary. He's got this elaborate, nice, nice baskets that he's worked on to take home to make our place beautiful and then I drag home toward the end of season the mm. things that don't sell and just start sticking it in the ground because I cannot throw it away and so there's my hodgepodge over there right that's what I know. do I cannot yeah. pass up you know because they discount it discount it <laughs> yes. discount it pretty yes. soon it's like 90% off yes. and you're like how can you not buy that I know, know but I can't give them away at the end and it's if it's above 90 degrees right. nobody wants to work in the yard that's so it's interesting over. Um, so anything else you can think of that was in that book that for anybody out there listening, who's going to start their own nursery? It's, it's, it's been a while. It's worth, it's worth reading. Um, I've made a new friend recently. Her, um, her uncle lives in town and he's an eye doctor. And so he told her that we had this nursery. She's a young girl in her thirties. And so they bought one in Shreveport. Shreveport. Oh, and you know, she was calling me for advice, and I said, oh, first, I can't give advice. I just, it's, I don't know your demographic. I don't know the area. But it's been interesting talking with her because she had this vision, much like our customers come in and say, I could stay here all day and listen to the fountains mm-hmm. and look at the pretty flowers. And it is, and that's what we want them to feel. You know, we want you to come in and have a feel-good experience. And so this girl felt that way going into the garden centers. I don't know how they came up on that location, but um, she's realized it's work. Oh. It's work. Yeah. And she's also working with her husband. She said, how's this going to work out? I said, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> you can make it work or not. So it's, it's tough. And so I've been listening to her struggles a little bit along the way, and it's and they, and that's difficult. a whole different zone. It's a different zone, so yeah. They're, so they're, I just their don't stuff's know. very different, right? Mm-hmm. It's different, and um, it hers had also been established. So I expect she'll do well, but like me, she was not in in horticulture. She didn't have a degree in that. She just decided this is what I want to do. She said, "I love plants. I don't see why I can't do it." 
I said, if you have that attitude, I think you'll be fine. Right. So well, well I think I think like the benefit for people like her and the people for, for like mm. for like you guys mm-hmm. who are local, who are in the community, who are doing podcasts, who go to church, who you know go to parties, and you right. know you're here, so people know you. So hopefully, mm. more people will choose to buy local and yeah. buy from people they know who you know are supporting the community than people who will just run mm. you know to a hardware store, which is also good. Yeah. You know, if people sure. want to, you know, but but I do think supporting you know local businesses like you guys mm. is really important. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you one other thing that um, our guys have done. I'm not even sure how we got started on this, but well, I do know one way. Our guys had started doing some masonry work, and they needed some practice. There's a church on the way towards Real Foot Lake, Mount Manuel, and they have a cemetery. It's a small church, not many folks there. Nice cemetery, but they keep it up themselves, and it was there was nothing there to indicate here's where you enter. And so our guys have gone out and made these very nice columns, like really nice columns, just from Soleil. This is just a thing we wanted to do. Oh, that's awesome. They got practice, Mm -hmm. and it beautified the cemetery. And so right now they're going to work on a new Ebenezer Cumberland Presbyterian Church, and we're going to do a sign and some planting there. So that's something I'm happy to do because— well, we have family buried at both of these places, yeah. and so that's just one way we can give back, you know, to them. We have the supplies to do these things, and yeah, that's awesome. I'm happy to be able to do something yeah, like that. That's great. Yeah, giving back to the community. So, mm-hmm, it's not much, but I might just feel like we've got the supplies to do this. So, just something we can give. Well, back. that makes me glad that I bought my Christmas tree from you guys See? last year. You know? <laughs> I have, and I just want you to know that that I have tried so hard to take care of it because we decided to buy the tree and then put it in a pot and really take care of it right. all year. And so we bought two, That's a big great. one and a little. Mm. The little one did well. The big one, yeah. were, uh, yeah. you know, I, this may be its second and last Christmas because it's got some brown <laughs> oh. on it, you know. But the little one's hanging in there, so you know, it'll be our Christmas tree this year. Thank you guys so much for joining welcome. us. Oh, thank you. This was fun. Thank you, thank you. And now, let's see what we can discover behind the scenes at Discovery Park of America. Hello, I'm Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at Discovery Park of America. And today, I am with Zach Ray, Discovery Park of America's in-house historian, who will be sharing a story that I'm sure all of you are going to find fascinating. We are going to be learning about the everyday life of a Civil War soldier. Zach, how are you today? Doing wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Uh, So take it away. Where do we begin? Well, we basically begin with how a Civil War soldier would have lived his daily life. Um, It is not a pleasant experience. It would be marching from destination to destination. Some of the things they would face, there is a story I've read of Union soldiers marching between locations and not having enough water. And they look on the side of the road and they find a pond. And on this pond is a layer of grime with mosquitoes flying around it. And they decide, well, we're going to move the grime out of the way, dip our canteens in there and get our water because we need water to survive. This does not play out well for them because they get one of the many diseases that was rampant during the Civil War, which was dysentery. When you set up for camp, you would have a doctor or a surgeon on site. That surgeon had to take care of the troops. One thing that he had to face was dysentery and battle wounds. Speaking on the dysentery, they actually, uh, one thing they prescribed was a thing called blue mass, which was a little blue pill where it's blue because of the main ingredient. Main ingredient being mercury. So not only did you have to worry about dysentery, but you also had to worry about some of the medicines that were available at the time because they could kill you just as likely as the diseases. Um, Your surgeons, they ended up having to, a lot of the medical practices at the time, we can look at them and kind of think of them as barbaric. Um, One of the big things that happened during the Civil War was if you got injured on the battlefield, let's say you got shot in the leg, most likely that leg is going to be amputated. This was because the easiest way to stop infection was just to amputate the leg and not try to save the wo- save the leg with the wound in it. This actually helped some soldiers survive. Now, if you had a, you might later on have to get more of the leg amputated, but that was something for another doctor to do down the line. 
I do want to mention in the life of a Civil War soldier, one man in particular actually saved more people on the battlefield than any other, and that is a man by the name of Jonathan Letterman. He actually came up with an ambulance system. Um, Before then, um, at the Battle of Antietam, the very first battle, there was individuals left on the field for days because the ambulance service before them was atrocious. It, they did not, they put people in charge of being the ambulance service that had no training whatsoever. They ended up leaving men on the field. J- um, Jonathan Letterman designed a way of, okay, we're going to have a unit that is the ambulance service. So our task is get those men off the field, give them to get them to a field dressing station where they can get some help, move them back, get them on ambulances to get them to a field hospital, and then go on from there. Um, so this was this was a time period where you're more likely to die from a disease than you are from getting shot. It's a fun time period to live in, by no means. I'd, I'd have to agree with you on that. Well, I know a lot of our listeners, much like myself, discovered something new today. Uh, one little fact before we go, you can find out more and learn more about the Civil War here at Discovery Park of America in our military gallery on the entry level. Thank you all for listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast, and we hope to see you here at Discovery Park of America real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.